Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bingham. Welcome to Biochemistry One. So this is an introduction to a, a tutoring program where we are going to give you in an efficient and effective way the tools you need to master biochemistry. And my goal in this introductory segment is to both introduce you to the fundamental simplicity of biochemistry, something that most of you may not be used to thinking of. That is, at first glance, biochemistry looks like a, a blizzard of disconnected details, intimidating, even overwhelming. I want to begin today for the first time to give you uh, the opportunity to take the first steps to understanding that that's not the case, that biochemistry uh, r uh, emerges from uh, a very simple set of principles uh, that are easily comprehended, easily mastered, and again, we're going to give you the tools for, for to achieve that mastery. Also, at the end of the segment, uh, this segment, I'll introduce you to the, the various tools that we're actually going to provide to you. And we'll, we'll talk about uh, how those tools, how you can use them, how you can achieve a mastery of biochemistry uh, through them. So let's begin with the context in which we're operating. So this set of images uh, illustrates a sort of fundamental cognitive problem that, that humans uh, have always had. That is, to us, the physical and chemical world symbolized here by the periodic table seems to be something quite different than the biological world symbolized by the two uh, images of organisms at the top of this uh, frame. The big red line here indicates that we intuitively think about these two domains as being very different from one another. One of the points that I want to make today and that we'll continue to make throughout the, the, our progress through this journey is that that is precisely the opposite is true. In fact, these two domains of knowledge, chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, biological chemistry, and then ultimately cell biology and organismic biology are in fact all parts of the same large jigsaw puzzle. And biochemistry is the piece that joins them into a unified whole. And so in some sense, uh, uh, um, biochemistry is the glue that unifies us unifies all of physics, chemistry, and biology into a single remarkable intellectual whole. That realization, in fact, is one of the great intellectual achievements of the last uh, t a century and a half. And of course, our goal here is to give you practical insight into that insight, into that um, a picture of the world that allow you to do well on exams and to master the content. All right, so let's begin by looking at the fundamental atomic simplicity of organisms. And I'm going to do that by touring the periodic table. And let's zero in on the periodic table just for a moment and look at the fundamental atomic simplicity of life. So this segment of the periodic table ha has over 100 elements shown. And at first glance, chemistry looks really complicated. As most of you know, it is ultimately not. But the atomic chemistry of biology is even simpler than chemistry more generally. Let me give you some feeling for that. If you take the three most abundant elements in your body, the, th the things you weigh when you step on the bathroom scale in the morning, the three most abundant of those elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, make up 93% of the mass of your body. If you add five more, including nitrogen and a few others, you get to 99.5% of the mass of your body. Uh, if the, that remaining 0.5% is a few metals and a few other uh, items that, are, that we'll encounter uh, later in our journey. But the crucial point I want you to understand here is that the number of different atoms whose properties you have to grasp in order to understand biochemistry is shockingly small, fewer than you have fingers, for example. And we'll gradually build that picture as we go forward. Let's take a minute now and look at the next stage of complexity, that is how building molecules out of atoms. You might be imagining that, yes, there are only eight common atoms in biological organisms, but from those you could build trillions and trillions and trillions of different molecules, as indeed you could. But in practice, biological organisms do not do that. And in order to understand the simple molecular chemistry of organisms, let's build up to the kinds of molecules that make up organisms. So this is a diagram of something that you've known since um, uh, uh, high school chemistry. That is that atoms consist of neutrons and protons in the nucleus. The number of protons determines the number of electrons that orbit the atom. And the number of electrons that orbit the atom determines its personality, its chemical identity, the things that it will do. So when we are talking about biochemistry, we're talking about electron shells and their interactions uh, in the atoms and molecules that make up organisms. So let's look at just the simple things that atoms will do depending upon the number of electrons in their shells. They can form one, two, three, or even four bonds with other atoms. That allows you, in principle, to make very complicated molecules, as we're simply diagramming here, each of these circles being an atom. In fact, biological 
systems occasionally do build molecules that are even more complicated than the ones on the screen, but not greatly more complicated than the one that's on the screen. You might be thinking, wait a minute, I know that's not true. Biological organisms make enormous macromolecules. They do indeed but they make them simply. And I want in the next few minutes to introduce you to that story. Before I dive into it, let me emphasize that this is a story almost all of you know. There's virtually no detail that I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes that you have not heard before and encountered before. What I want you to notice, though, is the fundamental simplicity of the story, something that may not have been brought to your attention before. And it's this theme, the chemical simplicity of biochemistry, that will, be, uh, that will unify everything that we do throughout this process program of mass of your uh, helping you master biochemistry by understanding the simplicity the rules and the structures the simple rules and structures that underlie biochemistry mastery becomes very accessible so let's look at the next level of complexity the molecular chemistry underlying biochemistry so this is our just uh, imaginary molecule here let's make another imaginary molecule that's roughly the same size let's say as glucose uh, diagrammed here to your left in the standard stick uh, uh, um, uh, uh, display. Stop and look at the number of atoms in a glucose molecule. If we pause the tape and count them, you'll find there are 24. So only a few more than you have fingers and toes. And in fact, they're all of three types, carbon, oxygen, or hydrogen. I want to argue to you in the next few minutes that all of biochemistry never gets more complicated than this molecule. Now, again, to understand that claim and understand how we get to, to the, all the wonderful things that biochemistry does through viewing it that way, we need to take a couple of other steps. So let's now treat glucose size molecules as units. So I'm going to symbolize them by a, a single colored circle here. Moreover, we can have units, deal with units that are almost identical, but not quite. That is similar, but not identical, like the letter A and the letter U, for example, in the English alphabet. And we can symbolize those similar but not quite identical uh, units here as differently colored circles. And the biological organisms take these differently colored units and build lar all the large molecules that you're familiar with out of them. These individual units, as you recall, are called monomers, short for one mer, and the long, linear, unbranched polymers that are built are in fact referred to, again, as I've already said, as polymers, meaning many mers. What I want to walk you through in the next couple of minutes is how polymers are used to achieve almost everything that we're going to deal with throughout biochemistry and also to illustrate the simplicity, the logic of how function emerges from these polymers, what kind of function they have and how and the chemical simplicity of how they execute that function. So let's start with the biochemistry of information. So we ha if we have a long polymer of subunits that are not similar but not identical, that is in fact strikingly similar to written English, for example, where A, E, I, O, and U look similar but they're not identical to one another and together with the continents, consonants, we can use them to spell all kinds of words. Here are a couple of examples here. So the same three letters are used to spell rat and tar at the top and butt and tub at the bottom of the image that you're looking at. What kind of code is written language? It is a linear combinatorial code, a line, 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 a single linear thread running from the beginning of a book to the end of a book, for example. Biological organisms, as you probably recall, encode information just like that, as a linear combinatorial code. Moreover, they do it with astonishing chemical simplicity. Again, simplicity. So let's look at how that's done. So this is our imaginary polymer. Let's take this oversimplified polymer and use it to, to, real, uh, to illustrate the functional things that informational biochemical molecules have to do. As I go through the story, you'll know the molecules I'm talking about, but don't worry about that. We'll come back to that in a moment. Understand the simplicity of their function, that is what they are setting out to achieve. And if you understand a, a, the functional uh, goal of a molecule, in biochemistry, understanding what it actually does, the details of biochemistry becomes vastly easier and simpler to grasp. So we, uh, the written language of, of English takes uh, 26 letters plus some punctuations and spaces. The written language in which the design information for a human being or an oak tree or a mushroom or a bacterium is encoded uses a written language of four monomers, as you'll probably recall, and we'll just color code them here. So long sentences or paragraphs or books of information are written with this linear. Mm -hmm.